If he's successful on Saturday, who does he want next? Eh, estando el sábado, ¿con quién tú quieres pelear? Quiero a, 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 quiero a Andy Ruiz. Eh, 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 nosotros, eh, él que fue campeón, yo perdí por, por, por el título. Y, y tiene deseo de volver a pelear por el título. Yo también tengo deseo de pelear por el título, pero eh, deberíamos eh, enfrentarnos y, y eso. Uh, uh, he, he wants to fight the best. Uh, uh, if that can't happen, I, I, you know, then he wants Andy Ruiz, who was the best at one point not too long ago uh, by beating Joshua. So Andy was supposed to fight on this same card as well. Um, and maybe, maybe the, you know, the winners of tonight were going to fight each other, and that's what potentially was being built up to. Andy didn't participate. Um, so, yeah, Andy Ruiz is, is the fight he wants, and uh, it's the one that's most attainable. It's the one that probably can really happen um, without too much back and forth, and, and, uh, and, and that would be great. He thinks that would be a great fight. Now, Herman, maybe you can answer this, but was there any talk about that fight being next instead of Alexander Flores, or was the plan all along for Luis Ortiz and Andy Ruiz to have separate fights? No, the plan all along, I believe, was for us to be on his uh, undercard as a co-main event um, and, and or the main event. That hadn't been worked out, but the plan all along was for the two of them to have a showcase fight tonight and then some kind of matchup early on in 2021 against each other, you know, assuming they both won, right? So that was the plan. And then Andy just, you know, kind of threw a monkey wrench in it all and said, I'm not fighting till next year and not really knowing when. But whatever, I mean, we want to fight. If, if that's what they were thinking of doing, well, that's that's fine with us and, and, and definitely with Lewis and, and, and his entire team. So, you know, that's the fight we want because it makes the most sense right now. Stylistically, I think it's a great matchup. Um, you know, he was the, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and it wasn't by luck. And, and definitely, you know, it's a fight where it can happen very quickly. We don't got to go through any kind of red tape and any kind of nonsense overseas or, um, you know, or, uh, or, or with another ne another network and another uh, promoter, right? This can happen. So Andy Ruiz makes the most sense. So if Andy is, if he comes back, let's say in January, and, and you know, you can ask Luis this, and then I'd like you to answer it as well, Herman. If Andy comes back in January or February, and Luis is successful, you know, coming up on Saturday, are you guys willing to wait towards the late springtime potentially for that matchup against Andy Ruiz? Que si Andy pelea en enero, gana, tú ganando el sábado, que si estás preparado para esperar quizás hasta abril o, o, o mayo eh, para pelear con Andy, cuando él, sabe probablemente va a poder pelear. Cuando él se decía, estoy listo para cuando él se decía. Yeah, yeah, he says whenever he decides he's ready to fight, uh, you know, you know, barring him not doing well in January, um, yeah, absolutely, he's ready. And, 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 you know, it doesn't matter if it's late spring, it's, it's okay with him, he says. I saw some comments that Luis proclaimed that he feels like Anthony Joshua wants no part of him. Why does he feel that way? Eh, que él vio unos comentarios que piensan, que tú piensas que eh, Anthony Joshua no quiere nada de ti, no quiere pelear contigo. ¿Por qué tú te sientes así? Porque eh, estoy en línea, estoy, eh, estoy ahí entre, entre los tres, cuatro, cinco heavyweight porque... Uh, because, you know, the, the, the offer that quote unquote was made was not an offer. It was never made. So they can keep saying and, 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 you know, to the blue in the face that they made an offer and Lewis and his team passed. That's not so. So, you know, just not making any effort to make this fight happen. Um, so, you know, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? As, as they say, he's not making forward steps to make this fight happen. Joshua doesn't even mention his name. He won't say his name. So, Herman, what you're saying or what he's saying is that the talk about him, uh, you know, fighting with, with Joshua, that, that offer, that was never made and presented to Luis. It was more so talk. Is that what you guys are saying? 
Lewis never said that, and he's not okay. saying he has no information of what is happening or not happening. His team, yeah. manager, and his promoter, and his obviously his advisor, right, uh, Louis Jr. Yeah, I just wanted to get clarification is why I was asking you as to you right. know what you know what I mean. I'm just wanting to go ahead and make sure that we get everything correct. What happened? What happened was is that a phone call was made, an offer, quote unquote, was made, and then it disappeared. So it can't be legitimate. If you call and say, well, you fight so-and-so, I'll give you so-and-so money. And we say, yes, hell yes. And then you never call us again. And you never send a contract. You never send in. Everything stopped. It, it just ceased to exist. And mm -hmm. then, you know, Andy Ruiz fought, right? So it, 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 just because you say it out or you dream it doesn't mean it was a legit offer. And that's necessary. That's exactly how it happened. So Lewis had no clue. I mean, he didn't know that that offer was being made. And then there was no reason to tell him when it was happening because it never happened, right? I mean, just because I mean, I, there was, yeah, exactly. It sounds it, like there was nothing presented to him on paper, no. which is that's how the you know you, fights get made. You still in boxing in today, assuming that you're not in the same promotion company, right? If you're with top rank and you're fighting a top rank fighter, if you're with you know uh, Tom Brown and you're fighting a Tom Brown fighter, you can get away with not sending a contract. You can get away with not really legitimizing as they do in professional boxing on offer. But if Eddie Hearn shoots over to Day Promotions on offer by phone, Day Promotions would expect some written contractual offer very quickly because they were looking for something very quickly. And we're still waiting. I think, I think George is still by, by, by his emails waiting to see if it comes in. You know, so come on. That's just a joke, you know. They, 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 they're running and they will run and they'll continue to run. And they should run. They should run because if Andy knocked out Joshua – Lewis is going to retire him, even at 52. Forget about 41. <laughs> Herman, how is he? You are the one that holds the pads for him. You're the one that's in camp with him every day. Can you tell me about how he's hitting, how his conditioning is, and the things that you see in the gym? Uh, does Luis continue to grow at a rapid speed in the ring? Well, he definitely is is hitting always as hard as he's been hitting that really hasn't it might be even a little bit harder or i'm getting a little older and a little weaker but <laughs> one of those two somewhere in the middle possibly um without a doubt what's what's really 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 sticking out is his intelligence and where he's placing his punches now and what he's doing with them and how he's uh you know picking and choosing where he's going to show you king kong right um so so that is the most impressive thing of how fast he learns those things, how fast he can pick up on a mistake, correct it, and then he'll drill it till the cows come home. You know, he'll drill it in the supermarket. He'll drill it in the in the in the in the school line when he would drop off the kids. Like he just will do it and do it and do it until it becomes what he is doing. Right. So as far as you know, he, yeah, he's he's hasn't hasn't dropped off. You know, I mean, the heavyweights have a tendency to continue and to do well if they take care of their bodies. You have heavyweights that are very good, but if they drop off, you know, like in, in history, it's because they didn't take care of their bodies, right? The Riddick Bowes of the world, he ate himself, you know, uh, the Buster mm -hmm. ate himself out of his career. And, and guys like that, they get up to three and 400 pounds, diabetic comas and so forth, and then they got to try and get back down to 230, 240 to fight. You know, it, that's difficult on anybody. And that's, that's the fall of even the lighter fighters, right? That, right, that up and down in weight, is the fall Mayweather did what he did and is the greatest ever probably arguably right is because he maintained his weight he never got to 185 did we lose you guys let's see if we can go ahead and reestablish connection with... fights around the two four. so you know, he's not going to have that issue. He doesn't get beat up. His hardest two fights were Wilder, and he was doing the hitting. He only got hit once in the Wilder fight in the rematch, and in the in the second fight a few times, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, anybody can say what they're going to say about, oh, his age and this and that, but it, it's, you know, they don't understand the sport. They don't understand boxing, and, you know, you can say what you want to say. A 41-year-old bantamweight shouldn't be fighting. A 41-year-old heavyweight? Taking, who's taking care of himself, you know, that guy's still viable, and it's proof because nobody fights him, and they can say what they want to say. You're not fighting him. You're not calling his name out. You're not saying, you're next. I'm going to beat your ass. You're not saying those things. A lot of, you know, internet cowboys that, that are saying what they want to say, but 
No one's doing anything. Luis, how much do you hold near and dear to your heart that you want to become the first heavyweight champion in the world from Cuba? ¿Qué tan cerca tú mantienes a tu corazón las ganas, el deseo de ser campeón del mundo de los pesos completos y el primero cubano de hacerlo? ¿Cuánto deseo tengo? Uh -huh. eh, tan grande, no, no, no se me ha quitado y los deseos míos están ahí en pie. 1,000% is still, is still very close to his heart, he says. It's, it hasn't gone away. It, it drives him every day. It wakes him up at 4 in the morning to go run, you know, and it puts him to bed at 9.30 to make sure he gets it rest. So it's, it's definitely a strong desire, a burning desire, you know, coupled with, you know, uh, just being the best at what he does and not being, you know, written off as a, as a you know, as a slacker or a could have been or, or any of those things, right? He's given it his all all the time. Where does he turn on, you know, that switch? Because when I look at Luis, he's so nice. He's so cordial. Uh, he's like a gentle giant, as I like to say uh, about him. But then when he's walking to the ring and when he's in combat, a whole nother different person emerges. How does he distinguish the two? ¿Cómo tú prendes ese, ese, ese chucho de Luis Ortiz, el, el, el tipo chévere, chistoso, eh... Amable y, y cómo tú cambias de un momento a otro a King Kong. ¿Cómo, cómo logras tú hacer eso y, y meter tanto miedo y hacer como tú haces en el ring? Eh, deseo de, de, de hacer lo que yo quiero. Amo el boxeo y hoy quiero ser campeón del mundo. Y, y mis hijos, mi esposa y todo. There, there's, there's just a burning desire to be the best at what he does. Um, you know, it, it also has a lot to do with his family, you know, his children and his, and his wife and their sacrifices in, in, in just being here, you know, at the, this position and this platform that he holds right now. So, you know, I think that's all that it takes, really. It's just a, an easy switch to turn. It's not something he has to work hard at at all. Yeah, because even a few moments after the fight, Herman, I want no part to be around him because he's still intense and lively inside that ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. Definitely. I give him a few minutes also. <laughs> Herman, final question for Luis. We greatly appreciate the time. Give us a prediction for your fight against Alexander Flores on Saturday night, uh, PBC Live on Fox 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time. Una predicción de la pelea del sábado, ¿qué tú crees que va a pasar y cómo va a pasar? ¿Cómo va a pasar? No se va a no, no se va a ir con la, con, con, con la misma mente que va a subir. Uh, knockout. He's not going to go in uh, thinking about, you know, the sport in the same in the same manner when he leaves. And Herman, any experiences? You and I are both in the bubble. This is his first time in the bubble, but has there been any challenges that he's encountered? You know, luckily, no, because there is a, an actual show that was happening here yesterday. Um, so we didn't get the full wrath of the bubble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They brought us in on Wednesday. They kind of altered their bubble a tiny bit as far as it's still very intense where we were picked up and, hand, and dropped. We're like packages. It's not, not mm -hmm. you know, but I get it. But no, we got here what we would have normally gotten to any fight a day before the weigh-in. Uh, I'm sorry, a day or two before the weigh-in and then the fight, right? So, and it's not like we do much. Like I said, you know, we're, we're not a, a big crew. It's just us, you know, and 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 uh, and we don't really do much. The, the most we'll do is go to a restaurant, um, you know, after the weigh-in or or whatever. So this particular bubble for him being the first one and his first fight back played right into what we normally would do anyways. But I have been in a few of them, and the team, our team, has been in a few of them with some of our other fighters, and they are rough. They are rough because you cannot move, you cannot do anything. Everything has to be out of your hotel room. And we get it for the safety and, and, and so forth. Um, so it makes it very difficult. But, you know, thankfully this one, that, that show yesterday midweek, kind of broke it all up for us and it played in our favor. Well, Herman, thank you guys very much. You're an outstanding trainer. Thank you to Luis for the time. And we look forward to seeing you at the weigh-in tomorrow and then at the fight on Saturday. Luis King Kong Ortiz joining us and Herman Caicedo here.